What's up, this is Laceboat, and welcome to today's video, guys. Today, I bring you guys one of my requested builds. You guys were asking me, Laser, can you make a Technomancer anomaly build that's a little bit different than everybody else's, but still does a ton of damage? So I wanted to change things a little bit up, make things a little bit different. I've seen some other builds, but I don't think I've seen this build in particular. So this is a very brand new build. I'm kind of bringing a different play style to the game and a different play style for the Technomancer. This is primarily focusing on three major things. Number one, is pretty much being able to spam as many abilities as you possibly can in a fastest session. Number two, giving you guys a ton of AOE damage. So a lot of area of effect damage. And in addition to that, providing health and providing you maximum damage output with your abilities as well. So if all that sounds like something you're definitely interested, a like would be greatly appreciated. And now let's dive in and take a look at my Technomancer Anomaly build. So we're gonna get started guys, of course, with the skills, let's go ahead and pull these up. We're gonna be using three primary skills. Number one, we're gonna be using the Scrap Note. This is gonna be really effective for us. We're gonna be doing a lot of damage with this one. This one's actually gonna be getting buffed by a few stuff that we're gonna be doing when we're using it. And it's actually pretty, pretty OP. Uh, we have a 9.6 second cooldown. So basically you're gonna be able to spam these uh, every 10 seconds, but you're gonna have six of them, which is actually pretty dope. Next up, guys, uh, and we're going to pair this up with something else that's going to be kind of crazy. Next up, guys, we're using Pain Launcher. Now, Pain Launcher is really effective for taking care of elites, uh, brute brothers, pretty much anything that's elite and above. That's going to be your main go-to one. It's it almost knocks almost like at least, not want to say half health, but at least a quarter of a health of each enemy really fast when you have this active. It's going to be 17 second cooldown, so it, it's not going to be used that frequently, but it's primarily going to be used against the elites and those annoying pesky uh, enemies. So. That's what we're running here. Next but not least, guys, we're using Blighted Turret. Now, Blighted Turret is actually pretty awesome because you're going to be able to place this one and it's going to do, uh, you know, it's going to spit out its boogers, like I like to call them. But the cool thing about this one is that the enemies kind of put their focus on them and start meleeing them. So they're going to distract a couple enemies from actually hitting you, giving you a nice way of actually maneuvering around the map or maneuvering around the enemies. So it's nice to have this one at your disposal. We have a nice cooldown of 4.8 seconds, so 5 second cooldown, really effective. So basically, this is going to be your best friend. You're going to be throwing this down almost indefinitely, so a lot, very frequently. And then using your Scrapnel to do as much damage as you possibly can. So that pretty much, guys, is the skills we're using. Now let's take a look at the class and the skill tree and talk about that. All right, so here we have the skill tree now, guys. For the skill tree, it's kind of interesting the way we have. We're going bottom tree, of course, picking up as much anomaly as we possibly can. So we have one nod towards anomaly power. We have uh, increase your resistant piercing, really effective against the elites. We have a cooldown reduction for ordinance. So it's going to allow us to use our scrap grenades a lot frequently. Uh, we have increase your anomaly power. Once again, boosting that AI, uh, anomaly power resistance, increase your resistance by 20%. Then guys, we're picking up once again, another anomaly power. We're going down and picking up this one, adrenal, uh, adrenalize, which is going to activate DK skills, increase anomaly power. For you and your allies by 30 seconds. So every time our blighted turret is up, we're going to be getting increased of our anomaly power. So that's why I said that's going to be your best friend. You're going to be throwing that down. Going to be boosting your anomaly power. And that boosts your scrap. Those boost up everything. Actually pretty powerful. Next up, guys. We're also going up one and picking up wipeout. Enemy BZ low 30% health. We see 20% more damage. This is actually pretty effective, especially against elites and those tanky enemies. Uh, when you get them you know, 30% below, they're going to be taking a lot, a lot of damage. And we're picking up one uh, one body, uh, which is going to increase our max health. This is not extremely required, but I'm going to give you guys another option in case you guys don't want to pick this one up. Uh, I did want to put this in here because I know a lot of people might be new to the Technomancer, so I want to give them as much survivability as possible with this build, but it is not a requirement. Next up, guys, we're picking up Ordnance Technician, which is going to reduce the Ordnance skill cooldown, so that means we're going to be using our Scrap Mill and beating our Pain Launcher a lot frequently. Then we're picking up another Anomaly, we're going down one and picking up Heavy Absorption, which is going to activate your Ordnance Skills, increases your Skill Leech by 15%. So once again, whenever we pull up, whenever we use our Ordnance, either our Scrapnels or whenever we use our Pain Launcher, our health is going to be given back to us uh, because our Skill Life Leech is going to get you know, used. And every time our Skill gets used, we get help. So it's really good. makes it really survivable. Next up, guys, another Anomaly one we're picking up here. And we're also picking up Increase Your Resistance Piercing by 15%. Once again, allowing us to do a little bit more damage against those more tankier enemies. Getting increased skill life leech. Once again, getting our health back from skills. And we're also picking up increased anomaly power by 6%. 
can also go on up one and armed unit, which is activating ordinary skills and uh, increase your armor by 50% for 15 seconds. So every time we throw a scrap though, when we count to 15 seconds, it's armor increased by 50%. We throw another one, another 50%, so on and so on. And we we'll use the pain launcher, so really effective here. Then we're also picking up team player, which is going to decrease elite damage against you and your allies by 10%. This one, I wish it was like in a nod where it let me pick it instead of being forced to pick it to get to the final one. Uh, but it is what it is. I mean, this one should have been swapped with this one. And that would have been a, made it awesome. But, you know, it's we have to waste a nod here. I don't think it's necessary, but we have to get the final part. So we got to do what we got to do. Then, guys, we have increase your anomaly power by 6%. Once again, anomaly power is going to be kicking in a lot. And then last but not least, guys, we're picking up Tech Bond, which is activating ordinance skills, increases your anomaly power by 50% for 10 seconds. Really important and really effective. So that is pretty much the skill. Let's take a look at the weapons. And I'm going to tell you guys, these weapons are actually pretty, pretty dope. And then once we take a look at those weapons, I'll come back and tell you guys what I probably would change that you might want to change to. And you feel like you have enough survivability, you don't have to worry about it. So going to our inventory, guys, uh, I am running right now two dead shields. You do not have to run dead shields. The only thing that we want to get from here are the fortress mod or the and, and the moaning winds mod. Uh, so basically, the perfect combo would be uh, the anime and the dead shields, or you could just run two dead shields if you want. That way, you have that combo of fortress mod and moaning winds. That's pretty much what all that you need for this build is that two, those two mods. Farm the dead shields out of the anime. If you want to know where to farm and check out my videos, I have dedicated loot drops for those. Not dedicated loot drops, but more frequently high rate loot drops for them. Uh, so we have dead, uh, the dead shield and we have the enemy. That's pretty much what we're using. We're using Fortress Bond and Moaning Winds. That's the main bread and butter. We're also using this one, the Torment Agony. Now, the reason I like this one is because we're doing a lot of really cool stuff. So we're doing, uh, for this one, we're doing the Moaning Winds. That's the only thing we added in there. But we're also taking advantage of Clip uh, Combustion, which reloading the weapon creates a shockwave dealing 96 damage to enemies within a 5 meter radius. We're able to proc that every two seconds. So every time our moaning winds goes off, we're also procking that. So we're adding that additional almost 100k damage to our moaning wind. So that's going to be putting our moaning winds almost at a half a million every single time that clip combustion and that moaning winds gets triggered together. And we're actually able to use clip combustion a little bit more frequently than moaning winds. So theoretically, there would be one moaning wind and a total of four clip combustions that we're able to use. So it's just crazy, crazy good. Think about it. So it's four that we're using. That's 100k, 400k, and one morning wind proc. That's you know oh, that's way over 800, 800, 800,000. Um, you know just damage just using this particular weapon. So keep that in mind when we go back to the skill tree. So really powerful uh, to use and really good combo. Now we are using the uh, the uh, downpour uh, downpour armor set, and we're using its perk. The main reason we're using this one is because Scrapnel creates an additional cluster bomb after exploding. Each deals 120, 21 anomaly power scale damage. This is extremely important because that's going to make our scrapnel grenades really powerful. And I think I should probably call this build Bomberman because that's basically what you're doing. So it would be the Technomancer Bomberman build. I think that's what we're going to go with because it's really, really crazy. And then we're going to be going with uh, with Anomaly Echo here. So that's the mod we're changing from this particular helmet. Uh, we're putting this one because it's going to grant us firepower. It's going to grant us anomaly power. Based on skill activation, our skills are pretty much activated constantly. So we're always going to be using that and always getting that 11k plus damage. Uh, and then we're keeping the bottom one, which is more traps. So it's giving us an additional scrap. No. Then we're going with the armor set. We're going with, once again, trap cluster. It's going to double the number of mines that can be thrown before triggering the cooldown. Once again, increasing our number of scrap nodes that we have. And we're putting a power a simulation here, which is going to boost your anomaly power by 11k for each elite presence on the battlefield. Really important, especially when you're doing high level content. So that allows you to do more damage per elite. Uh, not extremely necessary, but I, I like to have it in there just because I feel like it does help you out when there's multiple elites at time. So next up, guys, we're picking up the lights, which are going to uh, we have untamed power that we put in put here. Uh, which is going to allow us to deal 48k plus damage to enemies within a 5 meter radius around you equal to 30% of your anomaly power. Really important. And we're doing more damage, which is going to increase the scrapnel uh, damage by, you know, 119k damage per scrapnel. So that means that since we're using 6, you guys get what I'm talking about, right? Next up, guys, we're picking up the gloves. For the gloves, we want to have anomaly power, cooldown reduction, and status power. That is what we're going here. 
Theoretically, you could swap status power and instead of status power, go with skill life leech. I think that would be giving you a little bit more survivability if you're having a little bit of issue. And we have fine tune here, which is going to increase the de uh, detection of this ocean radius by 33%. Not that highly required, but it still does its job. Right here, we went ahead and, and put uh, Captain Hunter, which is going to increase your damage against elites. I mean, you could probably get away without fine tune. And maybe look for a different mod within the gloves and then swap the uh the upper mod and i'll tell you what mod you want to kind of look for and swap with okay next up guys uh we're going with this one which is kind of like what i believe is a perfect role that's what i wish i would have in the gloves anomaly power cooldown reduction and skill life leech legendary is not necessary but this is the only thing i had at the current moment with those kind of attributes but we have the, the one we uh kind of modded in here which is scrap the one additional mine can be thrown before triggering the cooldown so once again, six Scrabnels. We have Phantom Dash here. I, I like Phantom Dash a lot, but I mean, I could probably swap a different mod if I get a nice, you know, purple or epic to drop. It has a better mod in there. I would definitely, definitely swap it up and try that up uh, there. So that is pretty much the gist of the build. So now that we talked about that, uh, I want to recommend something that you might want to give it a try. And that is taking advantage, since you're using a pistol, you're going to be using it very frequently. Uh, that's going to be kind of your main gun. You could probably go to the class tree and not pick this knot up and pick this one up, which is going to increase your pistol and revolver damage by 12%. It does help out a little bit. It's not like, oh my goodness, this is just OP. It's like, like oh my goodness, right? It's not going to be that, but it does help out in case you guys want to go ahead and give that a try. Now let's talk about mods. You're going to probably going to want to swap in here and test out. So which of the mods I'm going to recommend that you probably check out. So I would probably recommend something like Ethanizer. I would probably swap that for fine tune, but theoretically, you know, you probably wouldn't be able to do that because you're always going to have a level two mod. Uh, you could probably get better boots that probably drop a level two mod and swap it for uh, Ethanizer. This is a really effective one because since you're, you know, Blighted Turret's always going to be active, you're going to be dealing 25% damage on that. Another one that I want to recommend here is this one right here, which I don't have right now uh, in this character, but I do have it. This is actually pretty good because it does boost your anomaly power as well. It is found on the Pyromancer. And there is a level two mod that I want to recommend too. That's pretty effective here, which is this one, which is the seismic impulse. It's going to create a seismic impulse uh, every six seconds when you're close to enemy. So this is actually pretty effective. It's going to give you a nice boot. You could theoretically get some gloves that have this one and make be uh, Captain Hunter. It's going to give you a little bit more damage because this is a level two mod. And there is another level two mod that I want to recommend, but it seems like I don't have it unlocked here. And that is the one that when you're running, uh, every time you're running, it gives uh, it gives anomaly power based on you running. I don't think I have it unlocked, but I do have it unlocked on my, uh, on my Devastator. And that's where I, I kind of figured out that would be an amazing uh, one to have. So those are the mods I would recommend to kind of get for the gloves and also get for the boots. Uh, so that's what would make the build even better than what it currently is. So I'm going to leave you guys with a little bit of gameplay watching me play Coliseum. It is actually a really fun build. Highly recommend you guys test it out. Make sure you guys test it out. You guys, I'm telling you guys right now, you guys are going to have a lot of fun time with this build. You're going to be moving a lot and doing a lot of damage at the same time, giving you a different way of playing with your Technomancer. I do hope you guys did find this video helpful and informative. If you did, guys, do me a huge favor, guys, drop a like, drop a comment. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications so you guys won't miss when our videos go live. And also when we're live, we're probably live streaming right now, so come by and hang out. We'd like to talk to you guys and chat it up just a tad bit. Thank you guys for watching. Enjoy the rest of the video, and I will talk to you guys later.
last of the monsters, but that maniac isn't too happy about it. Here we go. 